Hello, everyone. <clears throat> and thank you for having me here. My name is Malin Bobek Tada. It uh, used to be only Malin Bobek, but uh, I got married this summer and then we added Tada to our name. <laughs> we just felt that that suited us. Uh, and I work as an artist in the textile and installation field. And I have specialized in weaving with um, optical fibers. So my work uh, revolves around finding new ways of interaction. And through my interactive light emitting installations, I invite people to experience new environments and find new ways of interacting with each other. And I weave my textiles with a combination of optical fibers, more traditional textile materials, and um, conductive yarns. And I uh, make them come alive by connecting them to LEDs and different types of sensors. And I use my textiles to build unknown worlds where you can escape the reality um, and experience something new for a while. And my process reaches from concept building to uh, designing the textile and all the weave bindings and also building the physical installation. And today I would like to share with you some of my projects that I have made and how I work with turning light into a material. And I would like to start with this interactive fabric. So this is a sample piece that I have woven with optical fibers and different kinds of textile materials. And it's um, sound reactive. So it's connected to an uh, Arduino and a little microphone. So if you can give it a hand, maybe you can see if it changes. Thank you. So this is my uh, latest installation. It's called Tactile Refuge. And uh, it's an installation where the viewer is the creator of its surroundings. And the piece consists of six fabric wings that is mounted on the walls and a hanging centerpiece that is hand tufted and implanted with optical fibers. So the installation is floating in a dark sheltered room. Let's see if we can if we can start a little movie here. There. So the centerpiece is uh, registering human touch. It's built like a um, capacitive sensor. So it has a metal core and the tufted surface is on the outside. And when people are touching the centerpiece and hugging it, the light patterns in the surrounded textiles intensifies. And the more people that interact with it together and communicate and um, create the space together, the stronger the light effects. And the um, inspiration from this came from the underwater worlds and the outer space, which I will probably never uh, be able to reach. And I want to create spaces where people are kind of thrown out into an, a space that they haven't been before. And uh, maybe find a new friend or communicate with someone that they haven't, uh, that they don't know. And what I actually found with this piece is uh, when people started to interact with the centerpiece and started hugging it, they also started to hug each other. So it created a very nice uh, atmosphere in there. And the fabrics for this one is woven with um, Bogestun's Veveri outside of Borås in Ulysehamn. And it consists of 12,000 meters of optical fibers and around 500 LEDs, so it's a, it's a lot of fabric. And it's been exhibited in um, Heimtex in Frankfurt and also um, in Halvilske Museum 
And that right now it's in Paris in the Swedish Institute. So if you're on your way to Paris, check it out there. It's going to be there until January. And sometimes people st ask me how I started, how I got the idea of weaving with the optical fibers. And it, uh, <clears throat> it, um, for me, it's a very much a question of materials. Um, and I, I love to calculate how I can combine different materials to create new uh, effects and new textiles. And I found the optical fiber when I was a student at the Swedish School of Textiles in Borås. And it was also the same time I was going through major life changes. I just found out that I had breast cancer. And uh, of course, this turned my entire life upside down. And I didn't really know how to continue. But I realized that working with what I loved was my best medicine. So during my illness, I found, felt that there was no tomorrow, no past. It was only now. And I needed to stay in the moment to, um, to be able to continue my day. And uh, being forced to, to stay in the present awoke in my lust for creating things just for the sake of creating and not just having a certain outcome. And I was studying textile design and that was very based on giving results at the end. But when I found my, my new way of thinking of, at life, a new way of working, it gave me much more lust to work with the materials. And uh, experimenting with the optical fiber just kept me going, and it was the right media for me to give my creative side a spark. And today I am free of the cancer, and I'm taking my learnings with me. And when I finished school, I had uh, a new way of looking at life. I was taking one moment at a time, and I, um, I wanted to create new things. And I had an idea of the, of the optical fiber. I had in a project I wanted to make. And I wanted to create a fabric that could react to touch. And I had no idea how that was going to be possible. Uh, but I spent all of 2015 to figure it out. And the result was this. There should be a movie there. There we go. So this project is called Those Who Affected Me. And it's an um, interactive light emitting textile installation that people can touch and affect its appearance. And it reacts by send sending colorful ripples up and down the, the fabric. And it's a four-wing structure that is um, exhibited in a mirrored room, so it um, multiplies in infinity. And the textile is woven with optical fibers uh, and more traditional textile materials and conductive yarn. Uh, and it's the spaces where you saw people touch there. That's the space where the conductive yarn is woven into the fabric. And then the fabric is mounted to around 500 LEDs and connected to um, capacitive sensors. And as I said, the installation is called Those Who Affected Me. Uh, and I see it as an abstract self-portrait reflecting other people's impact on myself. And without the people around me, I wouldn't be here today. My family and my friends are creating me every moment. And the doctors and nurses that took care of me during my illness um, also meant a lot to me. And without their help and knowledge, I wouldn't be here today. So this is a tribute to all the people in my life. 
And the sculpture itself is two and a half meters in diameter and one and a half meters tall. And this brings me to the current project I am working on. It's um, an installation that has the working name Facet. And I'm creating this project together with the two friends, Bjorn Albin, who is a 3D animator, and Jonas um, Johansson, who's a designer and technical genius. And the focus point for this project is to push the boundaries of what is real and what is fiction. So we're just in the starting point for this project, so this is more of mood board sketches. But the end result will be an interactive installation that also has a layer of augmented reality on top of it. So it will be consisting of several parts in uh, different spaces that you can interact with just by touching them and feel the, see the, the physical change in the room. But you can also choose to wear HoloLens by Microsoft. And when you enter the room with uh, the HoloLens, you will also get holographic animations coming into your field of vision when you're interacting with the sculpture and in the installations. And our hope is to also be able to create a space where people, people can choose if they want to experience the analog part of it or the digital and the analog and that the people who are not wearing the HoloLens also will be able to start animations for the people who are actually wearing the headset. So uh, we're hoping to create an atmosphere where people start to interact with each other more and give each other experiences. And uh, in that way also be a part of, of the art, become performance actors themselves. This is another of the sketches. So there will be hopefully several rooms or several spaces that uh, people can enter and interact with. But this is a project that will have a, have a long <laughs> way until it's uh, done. So it will probably be in the next fall or winter. Then you can come in and experience it. And uh, my production process um, is very uh, different depending on what, where I am in the, in the project uh, uh, frame. But for me, the textile qualities in the fabrics are equally as important as that they actually light up and can be changed or interact with. And I combine the, the optical fibers with the traditional textile materials to create more tactile surfaces. And since we as humans are so used to fabrics and textile, we have it around ourselves 24 hours of the day almost. We wear it, we sleep in it, we dry ourselves after the shower with a towel. So it's so familiar. Uh, it also becomes a very natural surface to want to touch. So the tactile surfaces on my pieces are a very important part of communicating with, with the audience or with the participa participatory, the people who interact with it. <laughs> <laughs> and the optical fibers I use are uh, not at all made for weaving. They're traditionally made for the lighting industry. Uh, and they transport the light from one end to another. And they're made to give as little loss of the light as possible. So uh, they are basically transparent until the end of the fiber. But I create special weave bindings that make the fiber crack a little bit. Because when they're woven into a fabric, they, be, they 
flow like this a little bit. And that cracks the surface and lets the light come out on the side of the fiber as well. And I normally use um, addressable LED pixels, RGB or RGBW. Um, this is that's what I have used in in this piece and all of the the other piece I've shown you as well. And uh, to be able to mount them to the LEDs, I um, 3D printed a little a little mounting piece because there's no no finished piece that you can buy that will mount optical fibers to a specific kind of LED. So it was a little bit of engineering job. Um, and I often start my project with um, hand loom and prototyping the, the different materials and see how the optical fiber will shine more or less in, in different kinds of weave bindings. But the bigger pieces I, I create are woven on a shock hard loom together with the weaving factories. And I have a little film here of how it looks. So it's actually a two stories high uh, shock hard machine in a massive weaving factory. So it's everything from, from using this basic hand loom with ones and zeros, making the threads go up or down uh, until it's produced in this um, Chicard machine. And of course, there's also some programming involved in, in uh, creating the pieces I make. And I'm not a programmer, so I'm very glad that I have help from, from different technicians to help me to program my pieces. But um, I usually use different kinds of Arduino-based controls um, to, um, to create the effects that I want, and also the um, different kinds of sensors for, uh, for interacting with with the piece. And um, when you have a fabric that is connected to an Arduino and also connected to the internet, you can uh, create uh, many different kinds of expressions and you can give information, but you can also receive information. It can sense how, how warm it is in, in a room or it can sense how many people is working on a carpet and so on. And it can also connect physical space uh, into in different parts of the world by having one piece as um, a receiver and one piece as a sender. So um, there are many different things you can make with textiles like this. Thank you for listening.